Hey folks, uh, I'm Laszlo and uh, this time around we are going to work on your laptops locally. Uh, we are going to use K3D, which is a lightweight Kubernetes distribution, and we are going to install basic tooling on it, uh, logging, metrics, ingress controller. We are going to use one-click infra uh, for this, and after that we are going to dip our toes into the service mesh world, uh, Linkerd specifically, and uh, see uh, what benefits it can bring. Uh, all right, so let's just uh, spin up a, cl uh, a Kubernetes cluster with K3D on my laptop. Uh, K3D is a single binary tool which uh, gets you Dockerized uh, Kubernetes clusters under like 20 seconds. So it's rather cool and uh, this is the tool I'm using these days to test Kubernetes. So Kubernetes cluster list, I don't have any uh, clusters right now. And I'm going to create uh, a cluster called demo. And I'm also passing in an argument, a server argument, to not deploy a built-in ingress controller. There is a traffic inside uh, K3S, but I'm going to use the NGINX from one click in front. So if I hit enter, uh, the containers are created, and in 20 seconds, I'm going to have a working uh, Kubernetes installation. It also creates a Kubernetes context. So if uh, you type kubectl get nodes uh, after uh, K3D is done, you can uh, inspect uh, or you can interact with your cluster already. There are a few uh, system uh, containers on this cluster which is being created right now, uh, but that's fine. Uh, we are going to head over to one click infra and uh, let's see how to get uh, just Grafana, Nginx and Prometheus on the cluster. So first of all, let's uh, authenticate uh, to GitHub. I'm using one of my uh, dummy GitHub uh, users. And uh, once I authenticate it, I have to also install this uh, application onto my GitHub account. And uh, I'm only going to give permission to a single repository, a repository that I'm going to create right now. So mm, don't give uh, the keys of the castle to one click, click infra instead create a new repo for all things configuration so i call it gitops linkerd i create the repository and uh, head back to the installation screen where i pick this uh, this repo cool so this repo is going to be used as a gitops uh, repository so all configuration of grafana loki and later on linkerd is going to be part of this repository I'm going to pick this uh, single repo it has access to. So uh, step one is completed in the setup and just I'm going to enable uh, Loki. Uh, then I'm going to enable uh, Prometheus and going to enable NGINX as well. Uh, NGINX uh, configuration would need a, a host name as well. I won't have a real host name accessible from the outside, so I'm just going to call it uh, with a dummy name. Let's call it local. And uh, in other demos I showed, uh, I also enabled Cert Manager. Unfortunately, I cannot get uh, valid Let's Encrypt certificates uh, for this local cluster because it's not reachable from the outside. It's possible to make it reachable, uh, but not in the scope of this video. All right, so I have the three components. And uh, here is the chain set, and I'm going to write this configuration to Git. If this is your first encounter with one click infra, uh, then uh, I just can assure you that uh, it made a single commit and created two folders, one for bootstrapping the automation, and the second one is for all the components I picked. Uh, these are uh, Helm releases, and uh, it's basically like you would install the Loki stack Helm chart yourself uh, with a few uh, values set in your values file. I just do this for you and uh, I just uh, promise you that uh, all the configuration uh, I make is going to play nicely together, all the components, and I also have cloud specific versions as well for, for each of the components. All right, so the first configuration is done. Let's bootstrap the, uh, the automation cloning the repo first, then uh, creating uh, a namespace uh, called Flux. I'm using uh, Vive Flux for, uh, for the GitOps automation. And I'm going to apply uh, the bootstrap manifests 
which uh, in turn will create the flux uh, controller in my cluster. Uh, it's going to take a few seconds until the images are pulled, but once uh, flux is up, it is going to con uh, connect to GitHub. It's going to pull everything from the GitOps repo down to the cluster. And uh, from here on, any changes you will make to the GitOps repo is going to be synchronized uh, down to your cluster in 15 seconds. So that's a rather cool automation. All right, uh, the containers are still being pulled. Uh, that's okay. In the meantime, uh, I, I could show you that, for example, with Grafana Loki and with all the components, you get a few one-liners, like how to uh, validate that the, that the installation is done, how to access Grafana Loki here uh, without an ingress, but there is also an ingress created if, uh, if you enable the Nginx uh, component. Cool, so Flux is running, and by now it should have created the infrastructure uh, namespace where all the things I clicked uh, enabled are installed. And again, uh, <laughs> another round of image pooling, uh, just stress testing my ISP. Uh, it's coming up nicely. And in the meantime, uh, I could uh, look at the, the ingresses because uh, since I enabled the NGNX uh, component, I already uh, got an ingress for Grafana, and because I specified the local host name, which is like a dummy host name, I can access Grafana on grafana.local. Now, grafana.local is not part of any DNS server, so I have to edit my host file, and uh, to do that, uh, I have to check what IP address my NGINX ingress controller has. Uh, this is the IP address, and I'm going to uh, edit my host file here, uh, which is Grafana local is going to point to this address. Cool. So if all the pods are running, almost there, then uh, I will just open grafana.local in my browser and I will be able to interact with Grafana, uh, with Prometheus and the Loki in one single uh, interface. So that's the baseline I was talking about. All right. Uh, now I just have to wait for the ingress controller. If you are impatient, you can always describe a pod and see uh, what state it is in. Uh, basically it was pulling the images, but seven seconds ago, uh, the container was starting up. So everything is running, um, almost. It's not in a ready state yet. It's going to take a few more seconds. Yes, it's ready. So if I hit uh, the grafana.local address, oh, maybe, yes, I meant that. Cool, so that is uh, Grafana running on your local K3D. Now, uh, for default passwords, uh, this one pager uh, gets uh, some, uh, it has some hints. So the default uh, username is admin and the password is part of a Kubernetes secret, which you can uh, get with this one liner. So let's copy it and uh, just make sure that we don't copy the last percentage sign. Uh, the user is admin and uh, the password was pasted. You also get a few dashboards uh, by default. Uh, for example, this one is for a virtual machine. Um, metrics, uh, CPU load, uh, I have eight cores and the load is 1.7, so that's cool. Disk throughput, IOPS, IO time, and uh, a few uh, helpful metrics. Like uh, my disk free space is rather low, so I should take care of that maybe. All right, what else is in here? Uh, I can look into different namespaces like the infrastructure namespace is where all the different components are running what I installed. And you can see like Prometheus is using the most memory and most likely, um, yeah, Nginx was a bit uh, heavier on CPU than the others. All right, uh, and uh, one, one more thing is logs. Uh, the aggregated logging tool I'm using is Grafana Loki. 
meaning that it will pick up all container logs and it's going to store all the logs and you can ins inspect it inside Grafana. Uh, if you use one click infra, you get a dashboard with logs uh, where you can maybe search on uh, uh, errors. Maybe there was a few errors. There was, there was some uh, in the startup. Uh, but you can also use the explore view from, uh, from uh, Grafana. If you pick the data source and you pick, let's say, a namespace and uh, you pick a uh, cube system. And uh, there are some nice tools here as well. It can deduplicate some log lines. It can uh, show labels or not. It's, it's a very nice way to explore your logs. It also has a query, query language, which is uh, something you have to learn. Let's always uh, be like this with uh, login tools. You have to learn the query language. All right, so we have a baseline. It took a few minutes. Uh, the most of it uh, was actually pulling the images down. But using uh, one click infra, uh, we have the baseline of Loki, NGNX and Prometheus. So that's a quite a, a workable cluster already. And since it's in, in Git, uh, this state can be uh, replicated anytime. Even if you drop your case 3D cluster, recreate it, and just uh, bootstrap the automation, you will have this exact same tooling installed. So I, I just love this about uh, GitOps. Cool, but I was promising you some Linkerd stuff. And uh, Linkerd is uh, the latest component in One Click Infra. It's a service mesh. Uh, there is a long list of features, but uh, what gets me most excited is uh, top line metrics, error ratios, and if you work with a service, uh, a microservices architecture, uh, inter-service communication, so not like uh, com uh, traffic from the outside, because we have uh, an NGINX uh, dashboard for that. So a a anything that's coming through the ingress controller, we are able to monitor that. But with Linkerd, if services call each other, we will have a nice uh, visibility of that traffic as well. So let's enable Linkerd. Again, just a single toggle. And uh, we just have to write the configuration uh, to Git. And once the config is in Git, uh, you can see a new commit was made. Uh, once the config is in Git, uh, it will be synchronized down to the cluster uh, by the automation. So again, what was added, uh, a Linkerd Helm chart configured uh, with a um, root certificates and so on. So uh, there is a, uh, some level of configuration required for Linkerd. One click infra gives you this and also uh, enables auto proxy injection into everything in the infrastructure namespace. So uh, those will be monitored except NGINX because uh, that's just not recommended or it would require some extra config. So I, I skip NGINX. Uh, with the linker D inject disabled uh, annotation. And I also uh, reconfigure Prometheus with uh, the uh, linker D scraper. All right, so thanks to the automation, if I head to the cluster again, uh, there was a new namespace created uh, 46 seconds ago. And uh, all these pods are initializing, which means it's been pulled and uh, in like half a minute, it will be up and running. Maybe in the meantime, I can monitor my uh, uh, laptop's performance in the in the Grafana dashboard. So let's see what's what's going on. Last five minutes, not much actually. <laughs> uh, there was some disk IOPS, um, some disk throughput, but nothing was happening with the CPU really. So, but things are running by now almost. Um, if everything reaches 2 slash 2, it means that uh, all the containers inside the pod, pod is, are ready. Uh, what you also get is uh, dashboards. So without reconfiguration or restart or anything, Linkerd dashboards are part of Grafana now. So this is the top line metric. The last five minutes, there was some traffic going on between the monitored pods. Uh, also, I can zoom into a single deployment. Uh, right now, only the Linkerd uh, pods are part of uh, the mesh. And why is that? Uh, you would wonder why is that? Because I told you that I enabled things with this annotation in the whole infrastructure namespace. Now that's true, but uh, the injector, the proxy injector only works on deployment time. 
So we have to redeploy things uh, in that namespace. And uh, at that point, uh, it will be part of the mesh. Now, Nginx is not part of it, uh, as, I, as I told before. Uh, and the best way to restart things or redeploy is to just delete the pods. So I would get the pods. Uh, I would keep uh, Nginx in this controller. And I would also skip uh, the first line. And I would take only the uh, first column, color one, and I would feed this into the hctl delete pod command. All the pods are gone. Uh, by now, you can see that uh, the old pods are terminating and the new ones are starting up and all of them has one more container. So as you can see, uh, the default backend used to have one container, but uh, now it has two. And the second one is a sidecar from the Linkerd service mesh. It's a proxy where all traffic is going through. All right, things are almost fully back up. And uh, I just want to show you one interesting thing that uh, now we have everything in this namespace uh, part of our service mesh, maybe we can see how services call each other. So Loki is going to start up, that's fine. Uh, I'm heading back to the deployment uh, space. Grafana was restarted, I have to log in again. Remember the password was part of a secret. And uh, I'm heading to the Linkerd deployment uh, dashboard, namespaces infrastructure, and I'm going to look at the Prometheus server because I know Prometheus is uh, one part, it is uh, scraping services. So in the outbound traffic, I, I, I'm seeing a bunch of requests and uh, I can see that uh, it is calling many other services, um, 0 0.2 times per second, which means I don't know, maybe 15 seconds or something, every 15 seconds. Uh, and also these are the deployments. So for example, uh, Prometheus server calls uh, the Nginx uh, default backend uh, 0 0.1 times per second, and there is a three milliseconds latency. And so that's very nice. We didn't know that before. With the mesh, we have a better way to observe uh, inter-pod traffic. All right, and we also see that there is some inbound deployments, uh, like who would call Prometheus server, and guess who? It's us uh, from the Grafana deployment. So if I hit refresh, um, and set it to refresh every 10 seconds, we can see that uh, every time I hit this refresh button, uh, there are requests going into Prometheus, as you can see, uh, now four times per second. So my fingers are uh, clicking this fast. And the latency is uh, 26 milliseconds. Cool, so that's that. Uh, what I promised to you is that we are going to get a baseline. Uh, on the local cluster, we had Loki for logging, uh, Prometheus for metrics, and Nginx for uh, ingress. And then uh, we uh, just uh, briefly touched or tested out Linkerd as a service mesh. Uh, on top of our uh, infrastructure components. So uh, that's that for today and I uh, hope you are going to try this at home because you can. <laughs>